Hi there, and thank you for tuning in. Here I have the Nikon Z6 Mark II, and as you probably know, this is a mirrorless camera, and they give us some new options for how to focus manually. With these things that I'm about to show you, I think also mirrorless have sort of opened up the old uh, vintage lenses again, the world of old vintage lenses, that is, because we can now use them on our mirrorless cameras, and some of them are actually pretty good and uh, you can get some really good glass without breaking the bank. Of course, not all vintage glass is good. There's no such correlation, but you can find, if you do a little bit of studies, you can find really good glass for a reasonable amount of money. But of course, often uh, it comes with uh, manual focus. I'm shooting here with the uh, uh, 135 DC, the defocus control, uh, a Nikon lens. Uh, this one has autofocus mounted on my D750. But here it doesn't because the mirrorless cameras and Icon has not provided us with autofocus motors in the camera body. So that simply doesn't work. So I'm left with manual focus here, uh, but it's quite easy. Let me show you and I'll see you on the other side. So you will notice the red box here in the middle of the frame, just over the flower. That's where it will look for focus. You can move this one around with the, the joystick, as I call it. I think Nikon's official word is a sub selector. But if I put that over the flower, you can see as I obtain focus, it turns green. And that's the first indication that you have obtained focus. If I move the focus plane too close to me, you can see it's out of focus. Now I hit focus and now it's too far away, right? So that's the first indication. I think this only works for lenses that have CPU contacts. For sure, it doesn't work for all lenses. And uh, I'll return a little bit to this. If I want to move to another part of the frame where I want to have focus, say the dollar bill here, you can see I can just move that point to the dollar bill and uh, turn the focus ring and then I get a focus confirmation. It turns green. Second option is to zoom in. And if you notice what happens in the bottom right of the screen, you can see it gives a little illustration as to how zoomed in you are. And you use the plus and minus buttons on the bottom right of the camera but you can also set it up so that you jump directly between 200% and uh, fully zoomed out. And this happens in the electronic viewfinder. It's absolutely wonderful. And you can really get close to your subject. And you can see here, I've zoomed into the flower here and uh, you can really see if the flower is in focus or not. 200% is really, really close. And as you can see here, the details in the frame, now you can really see the the detail in the flower there, uh, a little bit to the right in the frame. So this is another great way of uh, securing that you have focus, of course, provided that you shoot something that is not moving too much for birds in flight. Of course, this is uh, not really an option. But you can set it up so that uh, I set up my record button so that when I hit that one, it jumps into 200% directly, so I don't have to go through the steps of uh, zooming in at various degrees. A third option is to use the focus peaking highlights and you set that up going into the pencil menu. That's the fourth from the top. Select menu D as Delta shooting display. And in that one you have D11, believe it or not, focus peaking. And in here you can select both the color. Uh, I look into that here. I've selected red as you can see, but there are various options here. Uh, red works the best for me. And then you can select the peaking level. I just take standard, but you can try different uh, options here, but it works really well. You will see that now when it obtains focus, it turns thing red. And uh, here in the flower, you can see, yeah, maybe red wasn't such a good color because <laughs> the flower is red, but you can clearly see that there are areas around some of the leaves there that, uh, that are in focus. So this is a really, really good illustration. And you can almost see the focal plane walking back and forth. You can see now it's at the bottom of the flower there. And as I turn the ring, it uh, it ends up at uh, the dollar bill in the background, right? Really, really a good illustration and also very useful for seeing how much depth of field you got. You should be aware, though, that uh, it doesn't work fully zoomed in. Uh, you can see here I'm trying to see if I can see some focus peaking highlights, but at 200% they don't work, but they do work, uh, I believe, zoomed in to some extent, but not uh, 200%. Finally, I want to show you the classic way of obtaining focus. And for that, I changed the lens to an AFS lens. I think this works both for AFS and AFD lenses, 
but not for older lenses like AI or AIS. But you can see here, your bottom left now have the classic confirmation dot. And as I uh, move the focus ring back and forth, you can see how it switches between being in focus and out of focus. And uh, this works the way we know it from classic DSLRs, even SLRs. It has been like this uh, in ages. When you have uh, one of the two triangles, then the focal plane is either too far away from you or too close to you, so that when it points right, uh, you are focused too close. When it points left, you are focused too far away. But you will also notice that the green uh, square turns green exactly at the same point as the uh, focus confirmation dot shows up. Before I let you go, I just want to show you one thing that also has a little bit to do with focus, maybe not entirely, but, but also. And I think it was Gary who was a little bit unsure about what the preview button was all about. You have a preview button here on DSLRs, most DSLRs from Nikon since, you know, Donald Duck was an egg and the earth cooled down and all of that. That button uh, is sadly gone on the Nikon Z6 Mark II, but you can set it up so that when you hit the button, uh, A button, then uh, it, it uh, it performs what the preview button used to do. Uh, and I have set it up so that when I push the joystick here, then it actually goes into uh, preview mode. The thing is that I'm not sure so many know because we have what you see is what you get very much in the screen here and the viewfinder, and that's, that's great. But the, the lens, sorry, the camera needs light in order to do all its calculation of metering and focus and la -de da 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 It needs quite a lot of light. So when you're shooting at wide aperture, say 1.8, the, the, the camera sets the uh, aperture plates according to that. As you stop down, the camera stops down the aperture plates until it reaches 5.6. At that point, it says stop and keeps the plates at 5.6. Even though you continue to stop down to say f11, it continues to maintain the blades at 5.6, as I said, in order to let in sufficient light for it to do its uh, job. When you push the preview button, what happens is that the blades for temporarily are moved to the position you have selected on the camera. So if you have selected F11, it will close down the aperture to F11 and show you what you will see. And then as soon as you uh, uh, release or let go of the, the preview button, it opens, ah, maybe not that much, but it opens up again, right? And that means when you hit the preview button, it is a preview of the depth of field that you will have when you have um, when, when, when you have selected an, an f-stop beyond f5.6. Um, so you actually, it, you have what you see is what you get from 5.6 and downwards, but upwards you don't. And that's exactly what the preview button uh, does. So let me just show you that and uh, that will be the end of this video. Okay, so here's a shot out my window on a snowy day in Denmark. And you can see that I go between F5.6 and 16. So here I'm in preview and here I'm out of preview, in preview, out of preview, in preview, out of preview. It's a little bit difficult to keep up. I'm voicing over. <laughs> some images that I've shot. But I hope you could see that uh, clearly there's much more depth of field when you push the preview button. And also, just for your information, the text to the sides uh, here, they disappear just like it did right there. So that's what the preview button will do for you. But as I said a few times, it's only from F5.6 and beyond that this has some effect. Otherwise, the camera sets the aperture plates uh, according to your camera settings. Yep, that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed this little video. You didn't fall asleep during the demonstration. As always, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.